Investors wondering if these issues and antitrust concerns and tax issues will have a long-term impact on these companies. Joining us to discuss it is Recode's executive editor, Kara Swisher, and Scott Galloway is a professor at the Stern School of Business. Guys, it's good to see you both again. Good to see uh, it's you. It's been a while, Kara, since we've had a chance to talk. And it mm -hmm. comes uh, on a week where that YouTube algorithm was major news. Uh, yeah. How does that move the debate? Well, I have a little bit of a bad voice, but I think, you know, we just talked to Susan Wojcicki. Um, at YouTube last week at Code Media about this issue and they, she said they were doing something about it and I think it's still an issue is that when, when, these, when these fake videos rise in, in popularity, YouTube you know, doesn't do anything about them. The same thing happened on Facebook and I think the quote that they used was, our platform doesn't, doesn't correct for people who lie um, and maybe it has to but it's gonna be an ongoing debate as these videos rise higher and higher and it's a problem because it creates a cesspool as I've talked about I don't know, now for about 18 months um, and <laughs> ruins the platform, essentially. Scott, it, it seems like we're in maybe a third era of how tech deals with media. First era was stay away from media. You know, aside from Microsoft it, getting involved, uh, you know, a, a decade plus ago, everybody seemed to think it was a bad idea. Then it was use media, but don't make any decisions. Just sort of be a platform, let it be. What is this third era? How is tech going to navigate it? Oh gosh, I, I, that, that, that's the correct question. My sense is that we're coming to the conclusion or the observation that tech is going to have to be forced to employ a very expensive attribute, and that is human discretion. That algorithms have a difficult time discerning what is false or what is incendiary versus what is real news. Look at the, I mean, look at the rigor that traditional media applies to any content or the fact checking they put up. And the most sophisticated technology in the world can't stop, you know, obviously false content from not only getting on a platform, but being shared and circulated. So I, I, I don't think, I, I think this is going to have to come, I don't think it's going to be a, a company-led revolution. I think it's going to have to come from parents or citizens or regulators because the smartest people in the world can't figure out a way to prevent this content from being, from being posted on their platforms. Right. And they also benefit from it because they're making a lot of money from advertising and everything exactly. else. And I think that's the link you have to make. And, you know, regulators would be the worst outcome here because they don't really understand these platforms and will probably use, you know, use a hammer when something more sophisticated is needed. Um, what we really need to do is there's got to be an outcry among the users. And then these companies have to understand they're moving into a new era of responsibility, which I, again, I sound like a scold, but it's the same idea <laughs> that that they have to take responsibility for their platforms. It's for the better of their business going forward. They don't want to just be this freewheeling Wild West platform where a false video can rise to such heights and be distributed. It's just, it's irresponsible at this point and willfully irresponsible. But, but Scott, sort of this idea of bringing more human element into it, I mean, humans have their biases as well, right? They make mistakes as well. Humans are actually the ones who write these or encode these algorithms. So how do you, I guess, how do you balance for that as well? So you're right, humans get it wrong, but organic intelligence tends to get it wrong a lot less than artificial intelligence. Mm. And Kara's point was exactly right. The tobacco companies were paid not to understand the link between tobacco and addiction, and guess what, they were befuddled by the issue. The NRA has paid not to understand the link between mass shootings and guns, uh, and they have trouble connecting the dots. And now you have social media and tech platforms that are effectively paid not to understand that if you don't screen your content and you don't screen your advertisers, it, it, you know, it can result in some very bad outcomes. So the reality is when you're paid not to understand the link between algorithms and no human intervention and some very bad outcomes, you're going to not understand it until advertisers actually start pulling their advertising, which is very difficult right now because we have a duopoly. Uh, Unilever and P&G and General Motors need Google and Facebook more than they need them. But until we see advertisers en masse pull advertising, you're going to see the same problems but only worse. These platforms have been weaponized by people who are focused on exploiting their weaknesses.
Uh, to that point, guys, uh, brings us to Snap, which yeah. uh, actually did have some uh, shade thrown at it by a major advertiser. This is a tweet that was deleted by Maybelline. Uh, the company actually pulled some followers and asked if it should stay on Snapchat after admitting that views had dramatically dropped. Of course, we all know that Kylie Jenner tweeted uh, earlier in the week that she barely uses the service anymore. Kara, I mean, yeah. uh, w when they're willing to uh, complain about engagement but not the quality of the product that's being engaged with. Yeah, that's problematic. That was, They were bad. I think Kylie was worse, I'll be honest with you. She has enormous influence um, selling a lot of products. And for her to say that was more, probably more problematic than Maybelline in a weird way. Um, people tend to try to discount the Kardashians, but that particular Kardashian is very powerful uh, influencer in terms of products moving and different things. Um, but I, I, I'm, I'd be curious to know what happened, why Maybelline put it up and then took it down. Um, and, and, and what occurred there. But the fact of the matter is a lot of people just don't like this, um, the redo that they've just done. I think I tweeted a text from my son saying, Mom, zero people like this. And he's a huge, avid Snapchat user. Um, he still complained about it the other day. Um, I think they have to think really hard about their customers, what product they want to do, um, and also, you know, continually dealing with the pressure from Facebook's Instagram. Um, it's a really tough situation for them. And they have to be very careful of how they they move going forward. Scott, at what point are we going to be able to extract the moral of the story from investors from what's gone on with Snap? I mean, uh, investors have no influence, no voting influence over what the company does. And now the company has done something that is ticking off at least a significant uh, percentage of its core users. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, we have a 20. I'm sorry. Kara, go, go ahead, Kara. Go ahead, Scott. Um, you know, yeah, we have a 28-year-old that oversees a media company that's five times the value of the New York Times that can't be removed from this position. What, what could go wrong? I mean, we were all hoping to a certain extent that Snap would be the Facebook of video as we need a third player. But the reality is the Facebook of video is Facebook, specifically Instagram, who's taken the four most popular apps in the world and squared their guns squarely on number five. Snap. The moral of the story is simply is simple, and that is monopolies are bad. And when you have one company that can potentially that can put an, any other company out of business, and advertisers have no choice but to go to either Google or Facebook, it's bad. Power corrupts. 104 percent of the growth in digital marketing going to two players, meaning that if you are not Facebook or Google and you are in digital marketing. You join the yellow pages and newspapers and that your business is in structural decline. It brings us to the uh, cover of the New York Times Magazine this coming weekend after having spoken to Charles Duhigg about his piece yesterday, guys. Uh, it's good to see you guys both together again. Uh, until next time, Kara Swisher, thanks. Scott Galloway, thanks for joining us today. Thank you. Hey there, thanks for checking out CNBC on YouTube. Be sure to subscribe to stay up to date on all of the day's biggest stories. You can also click on any of the videos around me to watch the latest from CNBC. Thanks for watching.